One of the beliefs I have that is there any such thing as a city and that there's not very many people who live in the city. They're usually sort of urban or commuter vehicles, so it's really people commuting in and out to a specific area of dense employment and office environment. So if I thought about it, yeah, from, from my perspective, and I'm a believer in EVs, uh, the other two may not be quite such a believer in EVs, but I would have a belief that actually the EV electric vehicle, electric vehicle does that job quite well, got inner city clean, yeah. Yeah, because there's, uh, there's quite a lot of these clean air areas opening. Yeah, so it's quite, quite important in Germany, I think. And you know, just take London, actually, congestion yeah. charge. So you've got effectively zero charge. Journeys in the UK, 51% of all journeys are less than seven miles. Yeah. So that, that sort of sets a context that people don't travel on a journey very far, they're quite short duration. Yeah. Um, and if that's the UK average, I guess city is probably even lower. Probably very, very short journey length, this, this but is it's probably journey. quite a time. So it's probably a higher time. So of course the belief that you're looking for a vehicle that's relatively short duration and capability, but you might be in it for a little while. You've got issues about, if you're in a city, how would you recharge it? Because curbside recharging, I'm not convinced about. But you've got leads trailing across, you're going to get someone cutting the cables. Well, there could be bespoke recharging, couldn't there? If you find yourself um, with a longer journey or you need a recharge, it could be that for an extra facility where you could drive your car to and it would be recharged. It's not necessarily um, something for everybody, but it could be like a um, service which is available not in, just in emergencies, but for circumstances beyond the normal range of the car. So off-road is probably good as a recharge system, and then you're talking about some sort of emergency charge. Well, it is that kind of off-road thing. So you, when you park, you could park in a charging bay, you could park in a normal bay, you park, pay more for the charging bay. What sort of age group are we talking? What sort of is there a sort of city theme or a sort of some sort of design philosophy behind a, a city car? Well, the thing's got to look cool in some way. And I think for the things to be deemed cool, they, they've got to kind of appeal to, to younger people, even if ultimately they're not the ones buying it. Buying it. Um, how you do that is obviously the, the, the tricky bit. Um, as I've said, I think proportion is really important on this, this car. So we're obviously being driven from the inside out to a certain extent, but we've probably got to, we've got to balance those out a little bit from the, the total optimum, so sort of the wheel size versus the height of the car. I don't know if there's any opportunity if you're talking about using like a magnesium door in or whatever, that there are places where you don't have to conventionally trim, um, trim inside the car. You can leave some structure exposed, so you've got a sort of simplicity of uh, aesthetic inside there. So you're saving weight, you're saving cost, the real trick is, is to create a character that's kind of cool and maybe a little bit cheeky, but isn't seen too cartoon-like. Because sometimes when people design city cars, particularly you see college projects with people designing it, they kind of look quite cool in a certain respect. But then you look at them again and think, do I really want to be driving one of those? You know, it's just it's just a little too Fisher Price in its uh, in its outlook. Does it need to be two seat or four seat? Well, I think it can be. I think, or actually one seat. I think well, you know, most of the time you just need one seat, but you do certainly need a, uh, um, there's packaging reasons for, you know, and luggage reasons. Most people possibly want to carry a bit of stuff now and then occasionally another passenger. So I think for, I think two seats is probably a starting point, but that's not to say that the car shouldn't be able to be a four seat. You say we haven't got much time on this project, but we're quite used to working on um, programs where we're working somewhere between um, two and four weeks for sketch programs. 
Um, I think this one is slightly different because it's a little bit from ground up, so there's perhaps more things to question, um, more opportunities to explore. The biggest challenge on the architecture of the vehicle doesn't lie with the, um, the EV element, but it really lies with making the upper environment work with Russell's expectations in styling. Um, also enabling these basic elements to create many different vehicle types off the same uh, and still have the integrity of the upper structure. someone to put in some investment and say, we're going to do this. There is a market there, cities need it, and actually courage to go and do it.